What's up, Mr. Grider's biology class? Uh, before you start this worksheet, I'm going to go over two problems with you. Okay, uh, first I'm going to read these directions. So complete, um, complete the following punt squares and answer the questions. Watch the link below. So that right now, this is what you're watching. You click this, you should be watching this video. Uh, do your best with the Google Doc format. Okay, it's very tough. Okay, it's I'll, I'll explain that as we go along. I understand that, you know, doing Punnett squares on Google Docs is not the easiest. So do the best you can. Um, and, oh, I spelled this wrong. And we will go. So before we start, there's a couple important vocabulary words you need to know. Right here, genotype. The allele combination for an offspring. Okay, so those are these letters. Okay, so when you're doing these Punnett squares, you're going to get these letters. S, S, S. Okay, and they'll change um, depending on what you are doing. Problem one and two, it both deals with hair. Okay, it doesn't necessarily matter what letter you use. Uh, these worksheets, they give it to you. See, this one's R, R. Okay, what matters is what is the capital letter and what is the lowercase letter, okay? We'll talk about that more here soon. Uh, but again, genotype is that letter combination. So here's some examples, capital A, lowercase a, capital S, capital S, lo two lowercase s's, two capital X's. Again, the letters can change. So the genotype is what is going to be going in these Punnett squares. The phenotype, phenotype right here, think physical, physical, phenotype physical, okay? So what the physical expression of a trait coded by the genotype, okay? So for example, S, capital S, S, capital S, lowercase s, they're two different genotypes, okay? Two different genotypes, but they will code for the same phenotype, okay? Both in this case would be, like I put right here, uh, both would be would express the dominant trait because they both have a dominant S, okay? So even though they're two different genotypes, they still express the same phenotype. They both, both those offsprings would still be um, long haired, okay? Uh, so genotype is the letters and the letters code for a phenotype. Okay, um, let's move on a couple more. Homozeg is dominant right here. That is two capital letters. Okay, so capital SS, again, that can be different. Depending on the problem, they will give you different letters. Let's say you are instead of working with, let's say we're working with freckles, okay? Let's say freckles is dominant, okay? And no freckles is recessive. So you might use F for freckles, okay? Uh, usually you use letters that, letters of the dominant trait. So let's say you're using um, a widow's peak, right? Let's say a widow's peak is recessive um, and a straight hairline is dominant. Well, you would use S for straight, okay? So homozygous dominant are two capital letters, okay? Homozygous recessive is two lowercase letters, okay? So that's what you need to understand what these words mean right here um, in order to do these problems. So remember, dominant is going to override the recessive gene, right? So in a heterozygous, right, you get a both a capital S and a lowercase s, but since there's a dominant gene right here, which is that capital S, it's going to code for long-haired, which is the dominant. So let me go over this again. So again, genotype is the letter combinations, okay? genotypes code for a phenotype, okay? So S, S, and uh, capital S, S, and capital S, lowercase s, they're different genotypes, but still will code for the same phenotype, okay? Because they both have a dominant S. 
two little s's like this would be the recessive allele, which is going to be short here, okay? Homozygous, again, dominant, two capitals. Homozygous recessive, two lowercase, and heterozygous, one of each. But just because it has one of each, right, doesn't mean it's going to code for the recessive. It's going to code for the dominant because it has that capital S, okay? So I'm going to do one and two for you. Number one is already done. Okay, so what you're going to do is the first thing is you're going to start to figure out what traits we're dealing with here. So you read this, one cat carries heterozygous long-haired traits. Okay, they gave it to you. It's capital S, little s. And its mate carries homozygous short-haired traits. So you got to figure out what traits we're dealing with here. So the question is giving you long hair and short hair. Okay, um, you have to make sure you know which one is dominant. So long hair is going to be dominant, uh, excuse me, uh, long hair is going to be dominant over short hair. How do you know this? Because this is heterozygous, right? Heterozygous is always going to have a phenotype of the dominant trait. In this case, that is the long hair, okay? So what I would do after this, right? So make sure you put what we're talking about here, long hair and short hair. I would skip down to the parent genotype down here. Okay. Parent number one, you could tell from the, the problem is capital S, lowercase s. And parent number two is lowercase s, s. Okay. Now, here's your Punnett square. For some reason, it won't let me put the... um parent number two's um, genotype down. Okay, so I put this right here in uh, uh, parentheses. It should say S, S, lowercase s here. Lowercase s, lowercase s. I could not fit it. I'm apologizing now. Something you guys will just have to deal with um, because of the circumstances because Google Docs isn't cooperating. So, what you're going to do, so step one, write your traits. Step two, write the parent's traits. Step three, okay, now you're going to create your Punnett square. So again, we have a capital S here. Should be a lowercase s here. So you're going to put both uh, alleles in here. You always write the dominant letter first. It should not be lowercase s, capital S. Always write the capital S first if it's there. So in this square, it's going to be capital S, lowercase s, because there's a, there should be a little s here and a big s, okay? There's a little s here, little s here. They make two little s's. And then same thing with this bottom one. Big s combines with the little s here. Little s goes with the little s here. Okay? So you are going to make this Punnett square. Now remember, these are your genotypes here, okay? Your phenotypes, okay? No, I'm sorry, right here. Long hair, short hair. Capital S, S, and capital S, lowercase s, will code for long hair, okay? Two different genotypes, but still have the same phenotype. That's why if you look over here, you have three possible genotypes, but only two possible phenotypes. Why? Because the homozygous dominant and the heterozygous will always code for the dominant trait, the dominant phenotype, okay? All right, so here you're going to put the uh, possible genotypes that will code for the dominant trait, which is long hair. So you got SS in lowercase s. Two lowercase s's is going to be short hair, okay? Now we're going to jump down here. Okay, so genotypes. I do not see two capital S's next to each other. Okay, so, so that's 0%. We have one, two, three, four squares. Okay, so you're going to have to be working on a percentage basis, okay, based off four squares. What does that mean? Well, I have two heterozygous um genotypes. So two out of four, because there's one, two out of four possible boxes. Well, two out of four is 50%. So you're going to put your 50% here. 
Same thing with two homozygous recessive. So two out of four is 50%. Now you have to look at your phenotype. Okay, again, different. Two out of four, these two will code for an offspring that has long hair. Two out of four, again, 50% will code for short hair. Okay, I'm going to do this last one with you, and then you guys are going to do the bottom two by yourself. So I'm going to do this in red. I'm going to have to repeatedly click red, so that's annoying. Uh, so here we go. One cat carries heterozygous long hair, and its mate carries homozygous short hair. So again, we're dealing with long and short hair. Those are our traits. Now let's go see what our parents are. So we have a capital S, S, lowercase s. Again, it's given right here. And then again, we have, this is, it's basically, this is basically the same problem, guys. It is the same problem. So I will go over this uh, again live. Uh, so we have the other one, which is little s, little s. Okay, so now I'm going to complete my Punnett square. Normally in school, we do this on paper, okay? And you would write um, what the parents' offsprings are above the boxes. It's really hard to do on um, Google Docs. So this should be a capital S. It doesn't matter which parent goes where. This should be a capital S. Again, it's not fitting exactly perfect, but you get the point. Here, I cannot fit here. This should be a lowercase s and a lowercase s outside. Okay, so we have a big s and a little s. Same thing. Remember, there's a little s here. If you watch those videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. Why is it up there? I do not know. Here, it should be a little s, little s, big s, whoops, big s, little s, little s. Oh my goodness, little s, and there's our answers. Again, how do you get that? Big s is going to always go first. I put that here. There's a little s here, combines there. Little s, little s makes two little s boxes. And then it's the same thing from here on out. So what genotypes can code for long hair? Okay, well, remember, well it could be ss or ss. Short hair has to be the homozygous recessive, which is ss. Okay, so we have zero. If we had big S, big S, I don't see any. So that's 0%. I have to go because I only can make 15 minute long videos. So I got to speed up here a little bit. Two out of four of those boxes, one, two out of four. So that's 50%. Same thing, 50% because two out of four of these boxes. Remember the genotype and phenotype are different. Homozygous dominant and heterozygous can code for the same phenotype. So we have 50% because half of these are going to be long hair. 50% half of these are going to be short hair. And then we're done. Okay, so you guys continue on, go through these last ones. Again, I understand Google Docs is tough, um, but remember, start with the traits, figure out what your parents are, uh, fill out this to the best of your ability, make sure you put the possible genotypes here, and then you get the percentage from the boxes okay good luck do the best you can uh please let me know if you have any questions you might have to watch this video a few times hopefully i'll see you guys soon